Okay, uh, we are going to be distributing shortly the product of the work we've been doing over the past week, which is a document that outlines the, the main principles behind SPH Home Learning as it is now being developed. Um, there are about 10, nine or 10 different principles there. Uh, maybe Brett, can you just take on one of those others and, and explain uh, what, you know, what, what is it that we're trying to accomplish through that principle that we've identified? Oh, you're muted, Brett. Uh, thank you. Um, I think one of the, the big things that we've been talking about is, is communication and how important communication is in this. Tim mentioned it earlier. Uh, in the, in the document that we've shared with you, the, the idea of communicating between teacher and student and teacher and parent. And so that communication will look different. Uh, communication between teachers and senior school students looks different than teachers and junior school students. And teachers with parents in senior school is different than teachers with parents in junior school. But we are committed to, um, to quality communication between the school and, and the home. Uh, and so we've we uh, have, have guided our teachers and, and what we expect with that. And so we uh, are doing things. Our teachers are preparing weekly plans that are sent out at the beginning of each week um, with, with students or with parents, depending on the grade level, that give a, a, uh, a clearly structured and organized overview of what's coming up for the week. They follow up as necessary with the students and or parents with, with daily plans or with resources that the students need throughout the week. And then um, the availability for feedback and for questions. And so we as a school, the leaders and the teachers, we're, we're available for, for um, those conversations with you as parents or with your children as students, depending on, on the setting. Um, and we are committed to, to, um, to quality communication with you as parents and to responding in a timely manner, you know, whether that's during the school day or within 24 hours of, of getting back to you. Um, we're also committed, if we don't have an answer for you, to let you know that we've received your question and, and come back soon with, with more information. Um, but the, so the biggest thing is communication, but in this setting, it's also important that we, we, we structure that communication well. And so we are, we are continually working on that, either with our teachers and, and with, to communicate with students, whether it's um, you know, re revising the templates that we use to share for lesson plans or for weekly plans, or, or creating new templates altogether. And, um, and so we hope that you see that. And, and as we do, we've done surveys in the past and we'll continue asking for your feedback in the future. You know, we love to hear more from you as parents about how the communication is going. We've uh, fielded quite a few questions about assessment and how that's going to work uh, now in an environment where we can't very well sit children down and just give them a test. So what are you talking about with your teens about assessment and how we can continue to do that effectively? Well, I think to look at the two uh, kind of large scale programs we would offer at our schools, the IB uh, program and the Cambridge program, uh, both of those organizations have provided us with uh, clear guidelines in, in terms of how we submit uh, student work for assessment and how we arrive. Uh, which we're grateful for and our teachers are needed to following those guidelines to make sure that uh, the work can be assessed and we can reach those final grades, reporting on those final grades, both to those organizations, IB and Cambridge, as well as on a report card. So we're grateful for that, but that only covers a portion of our students who are sitting examinations or, or major tests for those programs. I know in conversations we've had among Village with teachers, there's certainly the challenge of coming up with authentic assessments that can be done in an online environment. And so it's, it's forcing our teachers in a good way to be innovative about how they address the outcomes that we're looking for with our students. Uh, and one of the things that we are going to be uh, pushing a little more at Come On Village is, is projects. So project-based learning of some sort where we look at an authentic driving question uh, for students and then put together a project that will address multiple learning outcomes that that student can work with um, over a period of time and produce something, a product of some sort that they can then submit to their teachers for assessment. That allows us to cover our learning outcomes. It allows us to address our uh, in a way that doesn't require a student to sit and, and write an examination for a test, but is rather more authentic reflection of what we're asking them to learn.
learn and story that learning. That um, connects really well to one of the questions that we've been talking about as, as a group of leaders, which is what this all means for SPH in the way of us changing over time and becoming even better. Uh, so what you're talking about, Mark, is uh, clearly uh, a situation where teachers are becoming better because they're developing new skills, new approaches to how they organize their teaching and their assessment. And that will carry over into their classrooms once we get to return back to on-campus learning. What are some of the other areas where, that you can see us getting better, where six months from now or however long it is, when, when we're kind of back to something of a normalcy, where we can say, you know what, we, we are a better group of schools now. Well, I think we've probably touched on quite a few things, Matt. Um, I, I think one thing that's going to, we're going to see happening more and more uh, as we come out of this situation and go back to school as, <laughs> as normal, uh, is maybe just, we've, we've learned some ways about how to, to get better feedback. I think we're probably starting to rely a little bit more on surveys, perhaps, than what we have been in the past, certainly at my school. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've just seen the value of that uh, as a, an effective way of getting some quick, helpful feedback that we can act on um, really in, in meaningful ways. So I think that's, that's probably one area that's going to perhaps change at our school. Um, and I think just looking at the, the need to be innovative. I mean, this was kind of forced on us, um, but just seeing a lot of value and benefit in some changes that we've made. And so I think it's going to help us to kind of force us to look at other areas, even when we're, we're back together next year. But what, what other areas in our school can we be doing better or, or differently that could be more effective? And what are some things we're doing that we're just, it's just kind of how we've always done it. And so we're just keeping on doing it that way. But is, are there better ways? And, and how, how, what are some ways that we could find out what some of those better ways are? Um, talked about just assessment then, but just basic teaching pedagogy in, in general. I think we're, we're looking at some more innovative ways that um, are going to morph into some, some new and different things next year when we're all, all back together again. Um, so it's very hard to know, I think, specifically, but generally I think um, there's going to be some things that, that change uh, and might be worldwide in education or just at Espaha that I, I, th I think we're going to look different next year in a lot of areas. I agree with yeah. him, uh, <clears throat> fully agree with him. Um, I think this is a time when we are forced to try new things, which we probably couldn't do it if this didn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we always talk about uh, improving, improving, which we have, I think. But the best way to improve if we, when we are um, we are put in a situation where we cannot do the norm. Uh, then we go into the new norm. So uh, I do believe that uh, whether it's school or our private life or individual or country or institution, I think we'll enter a different phase. That at this moment, it's hard to be specific, but I do believe that it will happen and it will happen if we're intentional about it. Mm -hmm. If we just have the attitude of, you know, just uh, waiting for this to pass, then we'll probably never change. But it's a pity. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, you know, as a school together, we believe that uh, this will be something that is good, that we do not know what, what it is. So always keep in mind that uh, whatever we do now, think about, oh, maybe this is something that we can also do in the future to improve. Already, I think that has to already be in our mind uh, mm -hmm. starting now. Yeah. I have always oh, loved change, uh, and I think we're being forced through perhaps more change in a short period of time than anyone could ever be comfortable with, but I, I, I share excitement about what this can mean for us uh, in the future. Greg, can I uh, ask you to share your thoughts about this? I was, I was going to just say that um, one of the great challenges in Jakarta, um, particularly between our network of schools, is the distance and the time to travel. Um, we've all been forced to reduce the um, travel time by getting online and learning how to work together, collaborate uh, via instruments like Zoom and, and being able to share documents and share our thinking. And I think an, an area that we 
have an opportunity to grow is sharing the strength of our, of our individual schools um, together. Uh, we've used the term better together. And we've, even though we're further apart than we've been uh, physically, we've been forced to come together in a new environment over um, online uh, meeting tools. And as a, as a staff, uh, teachers, uh, departments, et cetera, um, working with other educators and other schools, um, we've, we've, we're, we've been forced to learn how to collaborate, collaborate online and ultimately reduce the physical uh, distance uh, that we find ourselves in. And I think that's a, that's a very powerful tool that will allow us to um, elevate the best um, of SPH and the best of our teachers and grow together. We're, we're short on time for this uh, session. Any, any last thoughts from any of you? <clears throat> All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll schedule another time in future. I I, I really think that, uh, and, and speaking now to parents who are who are listening in, or teachers or students, uh, we want you to know what we're thinking. We want you to understand what Espeja is seeing, what we're working on, what are what kind of a future we are anticipating. Uh, we're getting questions from some of you about what's going to happen in August, and we don't have any easy answers. Uh, I think, like everyone else in the world. Uh, but we are definitely working towards a return to on-campus learning as soon as we possibly can. Uh, the challenges that we face are fairly clear, um, and so we can't predict the future, whether that will be the first week of August, uh, but we have reason to hope that it will be uh, early enough in the school year that, <clears throat> that it's not going to feel like forever till, till it comes. Um, I, I want everyone to know that SPH is just firmly committed to improvement and firmly committed to listening. Uh, we've received lots of emails and WhatsApps, and we've had great conversations with our PAG teams. And all of that has helped to factor into our sense of where we're at and where we should be adjusting things and fixing things so that we can continue to get better. So we want to invite you uh, to continue to share your thoughts with us, uh, although we will solicit it another time. Uh, we are marking today as the first day of what we call phase three of home learning. Phase one was the first week, which was a quick scramble. Phase two was the past two weeks after March break. And phase three is today. And I'll share with all of you a document that describes the 10 principles of SPH home learning in phase three, which will be changed again in phase four at the beginning of May, because we're just going to continue to look for things that we can add and change and, and tweak so that we can feel increasing degrees of confidence in the quality of what we are offering to our students. Um, so look for that document. We'll share that with you very soon. And we're also just trying to think of other ways that we can connect with parents, thinking of, uh, of, of, of other options, of things that would bless you, uh, for you to hear what's happening at SPH or have opportunities to engage about parenting during home learning. That's something that I think most of us are struggling with. Uh, but for now, uh, we'll sign off and uh, look forward to connecting with you, our parents, again before too long. So goodbye from all of us for today. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you.